What's up folks? We've got a really hot day today, so I really not in the mood to go fishing, but I thought, hey, you know what I'm gonna do? Is I'm gonna share with you some of the things I've done to try to keep the fish alive. As we all remember, in Kentucky Lake, I had a really bad time, bad experience. I will never forget it, to be quite honest with you. Um, to have to dictate where I was fishing, what I was doing, because I was worried my fish were gonna die, that just crushed me. Me and Wade could have went to another cove and probably finished the tournament well on day two, but instead we were stuck in that same cove and apparently it had been fished out. We didn't get the big fish that we needed, but we still did great. We still did good, but um, we could have done better had we known a little bit about those things right there. You know, I've seen guys have them. I won't say I made fun of them in my mind, but I was like, man, I've never had a problem. I've never had a problem. Let me tell you, I got a problem now, because no matter where I go fish, it's like a hot tub in there, and then fish hit that, and it's like, bam, they, they're, they're, they're dead. It, it doesn't, even, doesn't even last long. No matter how much ice or whatever I put in there, um, at the end of the day, it's a struggle. So today was the maiden voyage for that guy, and we really, really did well. So I'm gonna go through with you the setup, what you need to get an oxygen, oxygen system on your boat with a cooler. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies. All right, well, let's turn off this fan here real quick. All right, it's going on. See my dog sneaking around here. What are you doing, Gabby? Say hello. How many of you guys were watching Three Pound Fishing when Gabby was on the boat? That one, one episode, one episode. If you could find that episode, comment below with Gabby on the boat. So, all right. So this is the setup. Let me uh, let me mount you guys somewhere here in the in the garage. Here we're gonna walk you through this. I had to ask my buddy. And he really set me up and kind of hooked me up. And I also had a lot of comments on the Kentucky Lake video and I got some definitely great ideas from that. So number one thing is you're gonna need an oxygen tank. Um, this is the size I went with right here. I think there's a variety of sizes you can go with, but I thought that was a good mix and I think it'll last me a really, really long time. You need a pediatric regulator. Um, you don't have to have a pediatric. A lot of guys will have the different, you know, dials and such, but this is a really nice one. And what I like about it is that it's click, it's click, it's click. So tell, the, the discharge amount is just a simple click. I'm not having to mess with dials or anything. I literally click it and it does what I need it to do at whatever level I need it to do it at. So the other is a 0.4 micro bubbler now these are not cheap i'm not gonna lie you probably could get away with something else but a micro bubbler from 0.4 is top of the line that thing was 80 dollars, so it's weighted down it's definitely professional grade there's no doubt about that and i'm really happy to actually have it the bubbles come out so fine it's amazing and then i got the cooler um, is one of those huge it's called a lifetime it's from walmart it's not cheap 150 bucks but um it's heavy duty. It's just like kind of like a, a Yeti, I guess. And um, it's a 77 quart. So 150 bucks, 77 quart cooler really works well. So, and this is all tied down. This actual, the, the actual oxygen tank itself is tied down by three straps. And uh, I didn't have a problem on the uh, lake at all today, man. I was going full throttle through the lake. Not a problem whatsoever. That thing was locked down. So I bring a five gallon bucket. I fill it up. And um, yeah, not a problem at all. Pretty cool stuff. Um, so let's talk about this. So I decided to put the, the actual auction bottle on top of the lid, three straps that strap it down. They fit very nicely in on the cooler here. I'll show you close-ups while I'm talking here. Um, I drilled a hole right through the top here for my tube. That goes into my 0.4 micro bubbler. That tube then goes into my pediatric regulator. And I believe that regulator was around 70 bucks. Um, so I know the compressor or the oxygen was 100. So gosh, it gets pretty expensive, doesn't it? That's crazy, crazy. I mean, it's kind of a joke just to keep my fish alive. I mean, seriously. But oxygen, $100. Uh, 
probably $70. $80 for that micro bubbler, $150 for this cooler. So there's a lot of ways you can make this done, do this a, a ton cheaper, I'm sure. Um, but this is gonna be my setup for forever. I mean, when I have a fear of fish dying, uh, when we do some of the tournaments that are coming up here locally, um, this guy is gonna be on the back of the boat. And today I did it and all the fish lived. So I'm really stoked about it. Um, and all the fish in my live well we're dead now there was like roughly around 40 so it's really not a it's not a comparison to be quite honest with you but i kept 10 fish in here from the minute i caught them in the morning and uh when i was off the lake seven eight hours later all those fish were still alive and kicking i mean still kicking big time so i'm really psyched about it i felt really good about it and uh, i think this is the what i'm going to use during the hot tournament so who knows folks I don't think I'm going to have another issue, but you never know. So. so that's right. You never know. So, but this is, I feel like I'm setting myself up for a good situation. Let's go through the system real quick again. We've got an oxygen tank that I got at Pax here that basically cost me a hundred bucks. We've got a cooler from Walmart. That's 150 bucks. Now it's a good cooler. Don't get me wrong. Also, I've got a pediatric regulator. We're looking at roughly around $70. You can find those online at Amazon. I like it because it's clickable. So it's click, click, click. It decides how much dispersion of the oxygen you want. Now I drill a hole through the lid. That's connected to the regulator. That goes down to the micro bubbler. Now the micro bubbler is totally overkill. I get it, but I have to admit, I feel very good about these little bitty bubbles that are uh, being presented to the fish. And it just seems like the oxygen is really dispersed very nicely in the water. I'm currently keeping the regulator at a, a one eighth Although online people have recommended I only have to use it at 130 seconds, I believe it is. But this is the, um, the micro bubbler, heavy duty, very high, high end for sure, uh, commercial grade, but a great setup for sure, nonetheless. And all, you know, basically strapped down by three uh, tree stand straps on top of this cooler. All right, so a lot of people have been asking me, which three pound fishing rod I'm using. Um, I'm, a, I'm true to myself. I'm true to everything I've ever said about 10 footers, folks. I like 10 footers. I fish today with this 10 footer 90% of the time. I also have an 11 footer that's on my boat and then I have the 12 and the 13 in my rod locker. So if the fish are really spooky, then I'll use them. What we did a little different with the three pound fishing rods was that we really, you know, we went through four or five prototypes. I can't remember. And we were really focusing in where that stiffness needed to be in the rod. So we'd bring a prototype in, I'd go out and fish with it. And I got, gosh dang, man, do we, can, we, can we stiffen it up there on, the, on that top side just a little bit, maybe on the four, fourth eyelet? And that's how we came out to the three pound fishing rod um, elite series. And I can tell you right now, they're light. People's first impressions is quality and light. They're light and they actually have enough backbone to do anything you wanted. Today we were flipping in 15 inches. Yeah, uh, three days ago we had a 16 inch fish I flipped in. I said, we we're like, get the net. I'm like, no, forget the net. I'm bringing this sucker in and we brought the sucker in. No, no worries whatsoever. Check them out. Um, let's see, what else we got? So if you're uh, interested, you can check out those rods at ozarkrod.com. They are awesome. You'll love them. A lot of people have been asking me about um, live feeds. So we do the live feeds kind of in the winter time when we can't really get out and fish every day. And so as long as we can fish and we can do little things like this, um, we probably won't do the live feeds. Um, live feeds are kind of something we do on the, on the off season when we can't get out there. So uh, I do appreciate all the questions and people wanting to do live feeds, but um, I know we're going to do some interviews of some other guys, but that again is kind of something we do in the winter time. It's not something we're going to do during the summer when we could be out there fishing and putting some big fish in the boat. All right, folks. Well, I got to leave you. I do appreciate you watching. This is just one of the catches I've had just here recently. And uh, I do appreciate you watching. Please subscribe and tell your friends and share the videos. And I appreciate all of you because I'll tell you right now, it's hot, hot, hot days. And if you're getting out there and crappie fishing. Uh, you're a diehard for sure. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's tough in the middle of the day. But still a lot of fun to feel the thump. Have a great day.